I am Warren Sprouse, host of the Bible Forum every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. We're talking tonight about the Pope, the Pope being on trial. Pope Francis is set to be on trial later this year, this is 2015, by the Jewish Sanhedrin. That's right. Unless he retracts his statement that Jews have no right to the land of Israel or to Jerusalem, he's going on trial. Are they going to put him in jail? Probably not. The Sanhedrin appear in the Old and New Testaments of the Christian Bible. They are a group of 71 priests and lawyers who were the Jewish Supreme Court under Mosaic Law. They've been out of business for a millennia at least, uh, I think for two, uh, largely since the Babylonian captivity in 586 B.C. The Sanhedrin has no political or legal status in New Israel and clearly no authority over the Vatican. However, they say, quote, it is compromised, or I'm sorry, it is comprised of some of the greatest rabbis and, mo and modern Jewish, in modern Jewish times, men who have dedicated themselves to the Torah serving God and Israel. What is it that we are to make of this development? I think at the very least, we should make of it that religious Israel is beginning to flex its muscle. And it comes as the Pope recognizes the Palestinian state, while at the same time, denigrating Israel's claim on Jerusalem and describing Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian state, as an angel of peace. While in Israel, the article says, Pope Francis attended Sunday Mass at the Church of the Nativity. In his sermon, Latin patriarch Fouad Twal accused Israelis of being the present-day ver version of Christ killers by referring to the Palestinians as walking in the footsteps of the divine child and likening the Israelis to King Herod. Pope Francis later echoed these words in a later speech. In addition, the Pope embraced the Palestinian Mufti of Jerusalem, Sheikh Mohammed Hussein, calling him a dear brother, and showing a great deal of affection. This is the sheik who calls Jews subhuman beasts and enemies of Allah. In meeting with the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Pope corrected him when he mentioned that Jesus spoke Hebrew. The Pope said that what he spoke was Aramaic, but Netanyahu countered with the fact that, quote, educated Jews of that time spoke Aramaic, but the language of the people was Hebrew, and the language Jesus preached in was Hebrew. It's interesting to note that Reuters writing of this exchange pointed out that, quote, Palestinians sometimes describe Jesus as a Palestinian, something to which Israelis object, end of quote. What are we to make of all of this? Those of us who embrace a literal, grammatical, historical uh, method of interpretation of the Bible, uh, that's the same methodology, uh, by the way, that I use when I'm reading this blog. Uh, these folks see a very important piece of the end times puzzle coming together. During the Great Tribulation, there will be a one world religious system. It will dominate the spiritual worship and practices of the world. At the same time, Jerusalem will become the central focus of a worldwide attack upon God's trouble. Zechariah refers to Jerusalem as a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone. The enemies of Israel will seek to rid the earth of his mention and presence by destroying everything he holds dear and by destroying his prophetic credibility. 
Zechariah talks about the people round about Jerusalem who will bring the final attack. The Secretariat of the Court of Mount Zion, this is the, what the Sanhedrin are referring to themselves, sent the letter. The court has no civil authority. However, it does have, apparently, the highest spiritual significance in the minds of practicing Jews. The Roman Catholic Church has never, ever been a friend of Israel. It doesn't matter what they say. They are competitors in the arena of religion, particularly where Jerusalem is concerned. Rome views the church as the premier representative of Christ on earth, calling the Pope the vicar of Christ. Israel views itself as a representative of God on earth, being the chosen of God, the heir of the kingdom to come. There is not a difference of opinion here. There is an all-out open battle for global and spiritual domination. And I can only say to you, when it comes to Israel, the Palestinians, and the Pope, stay tuned. It ain't over till it's over.